Yeah. Okay. As far as the product goes, this is what the product looks like. All right. You open up your package. Typically, it's a clean procedure that we run. Sterile as sterile. Pull it out. All right, and it's basically just a catheter inside of the catheter. It looks like this. We pull off the tip, and then we can go ahead and advance that. And it's got that coup de tip. So one difference between this and some of the other products out there is a coup de tip and it's a mushroom tip, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little less atraumatic when we insert it, and it does give us the, the option of going right or left side of the lung, mm -hmm. which most of them will all only go right, right. side. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as far as setting up for the procedure, what we would do is if you guys order the mini VL, right? RT would come to the bedside. Uh, they would talk to the nurse, make sure that patient's okay with, with running it. What we would want to do is we would want to turn off the air 30 to 60 minutes prior to doing the procedure. We'd want to hyperoxygenate and we'd want to go ahead and do a close suction pass before we do the mini VL, okay? So if we did all that, Chris or John did all that, then we would be setting up for the mini BL procedure. So mm -hmm. after we go ahead and do the closed session, we'd go ahead and pre-fill our syringes with 60 milliliters of sodium chloride, mm -hmm. okay? We'd get those set up and pushed aside, okay? Then we would take our mini BL, right? It looks like this. We would take our ET tube adapter mm -hmm. and we would go ahead and advance it into Or AT tube adapter just to get it past mm -hmm. the edge of the cup so it doesn't get hung up on our ET tube, mm -hmm. right? On the back side of our mini BAL, we would take our Christmas tree adapter that looks like this and we would attach it here, okay? And then we would take our Lucan strap and we would start connecting this component here. I've used this before, so these two work pretty good. Mm -hmm. So we would connect that. And then we would connect this to wall suction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now our mini bell is all set up, connected to wall suction, and connected to our ET tube adapter. From there, we would go ahead and disconnect our closed suction, mm -hmm. disconnect our vent tube, connect it to our elbow, and then we would go ahead and insert it like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now we're in line to go ahead and start advancing our mini BL to get into the right or left side of the lung. Mm -hmm. This supplemental oxygen port mm -hmm. tells us which way our coup de tip is going. So if it's pointed mm -hmm. towards me, it's going to go to the left. If it's pointed towards John, it's going to go to the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can rotate that and it has a really good one-to-one -one torque. Okay. So now we're set up. Next thing we want to do is we want to advance until we get our mini bell to the very end of our closed suction catheter, mm -hmm. our, our endotracheal tube. To do that, we're going to match up the last number on our ET tube with the corresponding number on our mini BAL, mm -hmm. right? So we would just go ahead and advance that until we get to the end of the ET tube. Probably just a little bit. Does it often get cut up? On the no, it doesn't. It's just, it just because it's it's dry tube. There's no moisture. There's no lubricating in there. So it's, it's just a little bit stiff there. So, so you see a 27 mark on your, on your inside? You're going to go 28. It looks like 28 to 28. Now, the, the numbers on this smaller catheter, mm -hmm. this would be for 6.5 or smaller, mm -hmm. is going to be a little bit harder to see. I like to know look at the number before I go ahead and insert it. Mm -hmm. That way I can kind of know how far to advance far it and get it there, mm -hmm. okay? But once I get it to that point, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is take our syringe, connect it to our stopcock here. Whichever way the stopcock is, is in the off position, so I wanna be mm -hmm. closed up, closed session, and I'm gonna give it five cc's just to clear the tip of that catheter remove any gunk that kind of collected on the tip of the mini bell as I inserted it. Clear right here. Right, right here. Okay, right. once I get it to that point, the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is advance that catheter another three to five centimeters to get us past the crina mm -hmm. into the right or left branch, okay? Once I get it 
three to five, three to six centimeters, the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is go ahead and advance the inner catheter. So I would hold it here and then go ahead and start advancing that inner catheter. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we wanna do with that is advance it to the point that it meets, it meets the it meets resistance. Once we meet resistance, or as far as we're gonna go, that's the benefit of that mushroom tip. It's not gonna you know, so create any injury. Next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is give it 20 cc's, right, 20 aliquots, and then turn on wall suctioning and suction out and see what I get. If yeah. I don't get anything, I'm gonna give it another 20 cc's and then suction again. As soon as I get about five cc's, we're good, mm -hmm. right? We get five cc's, then we could start disconnecting things and pull things out. That was one of the biggest things when we did BALs in St. Louis, is sometimes you would push 20 to 30 cc's in and you're not getting 20 mm -hmm. to 30 cc's back. But then there was times also you got it all back. I mean, it's just, it's depending, some, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have two 60 milliliter syringes. You could go safely, you know, both of those. We're looking very, very small sample, like you say. Sometimes you're gonna get in on the first section. Sometimes you're gonna go a little bit more or a little bit more. Yeah. Once we get the five cc's, at least we got that. Then we just kind of di start disconnecting our components. We'll take our Lucan strap, attach it there, we attach a label, we send it off to the lab. You're not putting any specific uh, suction uh, force, right? Like, it's just the same motor suction. Yeah, yeah, 60 to 120. You know, yeah. depending on your yeah. wall suction and how it's set yeah. up, you may need a little bit more, a little bit less. Is it, this slide's pretty easy, mm -hmm. back and forth here? This? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'll slide easy, and this will slide and easy. And then this right yeah. here, this uh, clamp here that locks it in place? That, that's a lock, but really we don't instruct anybody to use that. Once you have it to where you need to be, insert it another three to six centimeters to get past the carina, then we're gonna hold here, and we're gonna make gotcha. the advances with the inner catheter. Okay. Right? And you say if you turn this towards you, it's left to the... Yeah, and, and you know, on, on, a, on a live patient with a tube that has a little bit of moisture in there, you can make a one-to-one -one torque on that and it's gonna turn, so. But you I would only wanna do that once you've come to the end of the ET tube, right? I would Because like right now that. it's not gonna do you any good, you're already. Yeah, yeah, at that point. And so you could insert it if you look at the orders and it says right or left, start at that point. But if you forget and you're at the end of the tube, then yeah, before you advance and you go right or left branch, yeah. you're gonna wanna make that movement to steer it there, one gotcha. way or the other. So. A little bit choppy there um, as far as setting it up, but the guys that are really good with this, it is really a five to 10 minute procedure by the time you bring all your supplies to the bedside, set up and go. Um, once you get proficient at it, and I don't know how you guys would set up here if you would have a super user or one person or two people that yeah. would be responsible, that's really the best way to go because otherwise- You can control really your quality of your specimens. Yeah, nobody, and it's something new every time, and if you're not doing it every day or every other day, it does become a little clunky mm -hmm. in setting it up and go ahead and advancing yeah. and getting your sample. If you're doing it, it's a very easy process to go through. Very Who would you want to do this on, Asazi? Uh, like an existing patient right now? Yeah, like a um, patient, like what would you, what would make you want to order this? Oh, so if you, uh, freshly intubated patient, you can do it maybe, uh, or mm -hmm. somebody Spiked temp on a vent mm -hmm. and have increased vent requirements. Okay. Yeah. That's the result. So they need both. So then you're looking at ventilator associated. So it sounds like something the shift leads would need to be trained with because there's no special procedure person at night. Because mm -hmm. they could call, the shift lead could come down to the unit and do it. So when you get an into freshly intubated patient, you know, they're going there such a big trap. This is, mm -hmm. this is the best. Yes. Okay. Right. Otherwise, you, you run the risk of a contaminated sample coming yeah. out. Yeah, or more often than not, we end up getting contaminated samples. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So when you compare it to a bronch, I mean, the accuracy or of, the, of the diagnosis is very similar. Mm -hmm. It's a blinded procedure, but it's an easy procedure to do. More readily available than a bronch and RT. The only thing is, so this is more for a diagnosis. This is not for a cleaning. Right. Yeah. We're so not trying right. to clean someone no. out with this. No, no, yeah. So somebody comes in through the ER, somebody with uh, the fever plus a uh, change in vent, mm -hmm. uh, worsening hypoxia, mm -hmm. uh, then we're looking for a ventilator associated vent. Yeah. Uh, we would be needing a bronch.
long sample, not a you know, you know like a it'll drink or something. I know Norris and Hoffman both support. They want mini BLs. The oh, rest yeah. of the rest of them wanted. To, yeah. All right. Cool. So yeah, those are exactly the two reasons you'd use it. Mm -hmm. Understanding who's coming into the hospital, mm -hmm. what they're coming in with, or verifying is this infection coming from the lungs? If it is, what's causing the infection, and then targeting the antibiotics mm -hmm. specifically towards that. That's the other big conversation we have around this is really limiting antibiotic usage to yeah. target the specific bug if we know it's coming from the lungs. Coming. So if the pharmacies involved with that, which most pharmacies are reducing antibiotics, they would love the idea of this. No, then is this a turnaround time for our labs? Mm -hmm. you know, this is it one size, one think? size fits all too? I mean, do we uh, only carry one size of these? Or? Probably only carry the 142. Yeah. Like I say, the 142 is seven or greater. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then 6.5, we rarely use that unless we have a patient who's like angiotema. Mm-hmm.